Hey guys, with my July 21st DVD update, where I talk about all the DVDs and Blu-rays I've gotten over the last just about two weeks or so. The first one I got is from Fox, and it's The Three Stooges, the movie. This movie has been being talked about being made by the Farley Brothers for years. I remember it was going to be, I think maybe ten years ago they've been talking about this, and I think maybe three years ago they were saying it was going to be Jim Carrey as Curly, Benicio Del Tor Toro as Mo, and... Um, Sean Penn is Larry, but it kept, and then that seemed like it was going to go through. Then it didn't end up happening. But the people that they got for this, the two are relatively unknown. I think people know Will Sasso from Mad TV, who played Curly. I think. I, I mean, I've been a fan of him, especially the Kenny Rogers character. I thought he did really good in this. I think, you know, some people have, you know, really didn't didn't care for this, but I kind of see this more as not trying to remake the, the Three Stooges as more as what the Farley Brothers were saying in the interviews, is just trying to almost bring more attention to the Three Stooges characters. Because, you know, Abbott and Costello and some of the other things kind of got a little bit more of a popularity to it and kind of considered more classic. And Three Stooges were always kind of like below a lot of the other ones. And Three Stooges, personally, were always my favorite. I think the episodes still, to this day, hold up. I think they're still funny, you know. And it shows, too, you know, things aren't always dirty to be funny. And I think the Three Stooges, like, this is PG. And I thought it was really funny for a PG movie. And, you know, I think it's the first Farley Brothers movie that they've ever done that's PG. They've done PG-13, but a lot of those come out and they're, you know, uncut and R-rated pretty much on the Blu-rays and stuff. But this basically is about the Three Stooges now, I will say in this, I wish they would have done a little bit more with the Three Stooges when they were kids. I thought that was some of the like stuff that I really liked because it was really different. But it's the Three Stooges, they get dropped off of the orphanage, and it's a, you know, a non-orphanage. So they end up living with the nuns. They basically can't get adopted. So years later, the church is in trouble, I mean, the orphanage is in trouble, and it's going to get foreclosed by the bank unless they can raise, I think it's like $100,000. So the Three Stooges go out on their own for the first time in their whole lives to try and make money. And it's them trying to do anything they can to try and get money. On the DVD they have a, um, I think it's like a test footage when they were testing out the actors. It was kind of funny because it was one of these scenes that was in the movie, but it was like different actors playing like the um, other parts. It was kind of weird. But like it was kind of, I definitely recommend watching that on here. But basically though they go out and they end up meeting um, the one woman who's from, I think it's the middle, not the middle, modern family. I can never remember her name. Um, but they, I think it's Sophie Varola. I, I can never say it, right? I always forget. But they end up meeting her, and she's like telling him, well, if you kill my husband, I'll pay you the money that you need, and things like that. I don't know. I really did think this was a fun movie. There's some funny stuff with, the, you know, I don't like the Jersey Shore, but the Jersey Shore was in this, and what they did with Mo when the Jersey Shore was actually kind of funny, because like, the Jersey Shore is almost like the Three Stooges themselves, It's because it's just ridiculous. But all in all, though, if you like the Three Stooges, I think this is a fun movie. I really did enjoy it. And the next one I got is a new Mel Gibson film, Get the Gringo, from Fox. And I actually really like this one. You know, a lot of people have a problem with Mel Gibson. I'm not a personal fan of the things he said lately. And so, you know, the stuff he's done throughout the years. And the, some of his, the, you know, I mean, just not really appropriate, the things he says. But, you know, as an actor, he really is a pretty good actor. You know, I really like the beaver, you know. May I help you save your damn life. With him all depressed with the beaver on his hand and talking to the beaver. But this one is shot in Mexico. He wrote this one. It's basically him him in the beginning getting chased by the cops, the American cops, and he ends up driving over this sort of like embankment into the Mexican, like right over the Mexican border. And the Mexican cops see him there and they're like going to let him go, you know, with the American cops. But they end up spotting that he has a whole lot of money in the back, you know, because obviously he got the money somehow. And he ends up, they end up putting him into this Mexican jail and taking his money. And um, it wasn't a smart idea though, because the money is involved, you know, with this really terrible person and it doesn't go well because of it. But basically he ends up getting put into this jail, which is not like a normal jail where you're locked up and you can't move around. This is almost like an enclosure where you can pretty much do what you want. There's women in there, there's kids in there, because if you have money, you can bring your families in there during your sentence. And it's real like you have to pay for your bed and you have to, otherwise you're sleeping out in the street. And, you know, they basically have jobs for you to do while you're there. I don't know, I thought this was pretty good. He ends up becoming friends with this kid. And um, the kid, though, is very special because the there's basically a person who's like pretty much in charge. He doesn't run the jail, but he's kind of like the top prisoner who has all the money and everyone's afraid of him. 
and there's something about this kid that this person wants. And because of that, Mel Gibson ends up having to help this kid and keep him safe. You know, I don't know, all in all, though, really thought this was a pretty good movie. I thought there was, like, you know, it, it kind of had, like, a... I don't know, it kind of seemed a little bit like one of those kind of 70s movies. A little bit like Broke Down Palace in some way. It was like a lot of little things like that. But I really did think this was good. I thought Mel Gibson, though, really went back to form with, with his kind of action movies. He hasn't done it in a long time. And I th like I said, if you like Mel Gibson movies, you know, just kind of forget about... I mean, you know, it's kind of hard to forget the way he, the things he says. But as an actor, like I said, I really do... I like, think he's pretty good. Um, the next one I got, and this was one I was really looking forward to watching, and it's from um, Paramount, you know, CBS and DVD, and it's the Star Trek The Next Generation Season 1. Now, the first thing I want to say with this is it's the Blu-ray, is that it's not, like, don't go into this thinking that it's just like an up-converted Blu-ray, you know what I mean? Like, it's basically taking the old episodes and just putting on Blu-ray. That's not at all what they did with this. Basically, what they did was they went back to the vault and got the original, had to find all the original negatives, all the original B-roll, all the original film, and they had to go back and reconstruct the entire episode. Because when they edited this show back in the 80s, you know, it was just edited, you know, shot on film, converted to V. VHS tape or beta tape or whatever and you know their only for format format that was ever edited was a standard definition version so they had to go through and basically put the entire show back together and cut everything and they match it up exactly how it was when it, when it aired they have to go back in and you know take all the footage with the ships and the things like that and drop that back in all the um effects that were like, you know, CGI or whatever you would call that back then had to go and be redone. It You know, I thought it was absolutely amazing, the, the picture quality. When you see this, because, you know, I had seen the uh, episodes throughout the years and you always were kind of used to them looking kind of washed out and looking like VHS. And, you know, throughout the years, because they would use the same tapes and play them over and over and over. And when you see how amazing the picture is, it looks like it was shot yesterday. The thing about the show, too, that I like is you know, there was like two episodes in here that I really liked. It was one when they were all getting drunk by this thing, and the other one when they went to this planet, and like everyone was wearing these weird like leotard things. And I think it was film where they had the biodome, and like if you broke a rule on this planet that you would get killed. That was like there was basically there was like no anything. Basically there was no you could if you did anything wrong, no matter what, you were killed. And um, you know the star the show stars Patrick Stewart as the captain and LeVar Bur Burton as the one I never I don't know all the names but the one that wears the thing you know I can imagine how, what a pain in the ass that must have been to wear that thing you know for all that time but like I said though they pretty much totally remastered the whole thing and it's not just taking the original version like you've never seen it like this way before there's no way you ever have because it was never in this kind of quality so I would highly recommend this I think it's definitely worth the purchase I think that, you know what they did do it is you know. It really shows with TV shows that they could remaster like it would be amazing if they did like Gilligan's Island and stuff like went back and found I don't know if they have the negatives anymore though because it's so old but anyway though like I said I would definitely recommend this I think this is a really fun show it has a feature on the thing talking all about the restoration has a new thing with the cast getting back together and like I said though this is a really good one definitely would recommend this the next one I got is from Lionsgate and it's the Will Ferrell movie when he speaks all Spanish. Now, I, I wasn't sure how he was going to do. Like, he really is fluent in Spanish. Like, he really knows Spanish and really did a good job. And this is done like a, kind of like a 70s Spanish film. And it has these extremely cheesy things that I love to it. Like, there's one scene when they go into a bar and um, the, the, the establishing shot of the bar is a model and then it's a model car going in, like a real cheesy car going in and there's a lot of scenes too and Will Ferrell is in the, behind him and his friends is basically like a matte painting background or just a straight painting almost like you know H.R. Puffin stuff kind of like 70's style painting backgrounds but the basic idea is Will Ferrell is like a ranch hand with his family and his brother is a very successful person who comes back into town. His father really doesn't care for Will Ferrell and, you know, he's sort of a screw-up. Will Ferrell's character is pretty much a screw-up. He has these two friends. One is the guy who was in Piranha 3 Double D and he's in a lot of other stuff. The other one is Efren Romero, best known as Pedro from Napoleon Dynamite. Their stuff was some of my favorite stuff. I almost wish there was a little bit more with those characters because I really liked them in the movie. I thought they were good. The, um, the basic idea, though, is his brother comes into town. His father really is all, you know, all about his brother and thinks he's perfect. But his brother, you know, is there with his new girlfriend, who he's engaged to. 
and um, things happen too with Will Ferrell and that girl. But the brother is basically into drugs and brings very bad things to the family, and Will Ferrell has to try and figure everything out, you know, help the family. I really did like this, though. I think this is a pretty fun, weird kind of, you know, Spanish film. I thought, like I said, everybody did a really good job. Will Ferrell did a great job speaking Spanish in it. And you almost kind of forgot, you know, that he, you know, that wasn't his first language. All in all, though, I think this is a really funny one. Very strange. Like I said, I love the cheesy aspects to it that they did on purpose. Especially one scene when they put, like, text up about excuse us for this cheesiness of the scene. I don't know. I like that kind of stuff. I really love cheesy things. The next one I got from Lionsgate is the Miley Cyrus Demi Moore movie, Laugh Out Loud. And I don't know if this ever came out to theaters or not. I, I don't think it had a big release in America. Well, the basic movie is, first I'm going to say it's just okay. It's basically, um, I know it's a remake of a French film, and I, it might have been the same director who, who did the French film, which I know got really good reviews and people really liked. But the basic idea of this is Miley Cyrus is going back to school. I think she's in her last year of school, and she's there with her boyfriend, and basically she's talking to the boyfriend, and he's like, well, I hooked up with someone at summer camp and all this stuff, you know, because he was a counselor or whatever. And she's really upset about it and you know at the same time she has this best friend this guy is her best friend and they've sort of just been friends for years and he's played by the actor who was in the Boy George film that I, it was really one I just recently watched which I really liked I think Forget About the Boy or Did You Hear About the Boy he was really good he's a British actor he did okay covering up his accent came out a little bit but um you know in this movie though she ends up having a thing with you know, starts to have a relationship with the friend, the best friend. At the same time, Demi Moore is kind of like up in her business, Miley Cyrus' business about everything, and kind of like overprotective and stuff. She's like, you got a candy wax? And all, it's like all the kind of weird subjects, like trying to talk about stuff. like, shh, stop talking about that. I don't know. It was kind of like weird, though, like kind of stuff Demi Moore was talking about. And like they mentioned on the back, or one thing I mentioned talking about, finding her diary and stuff, but, you know, I thought this was kind of a, it was, it was a okay romantic comedy. I know it's gotten some really bad reviews on IMBD, uh, Internet Movie Database. I always say BD. I don't know why I say that. I guess it's dyslexic. But, you know, I, I don't think it's horrible at all. I thought it was okay. You know, I, 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 all in all, though, I think it's definitely worth checking out as a rental. I think it's okay, though. And the next one I got is a new Clive Owen film, The Intruders. This is basically a movie like a, that goes between two different characters, and it's one this boy, and I think he's in Spain. I wasn't sure exactly where he was, and the um, Clive Owen's character, who's in, in there in England, and um, basically though, Clive Owen's daughter is seeing in her, like in the, in the house or in, the, in her closet, she's hearing things, and convinced that there's someone in there, and. Um, Clive Owen's character ends up seeing the thing and, you know, attacking the thing. And um, basically, though, people are telling him that he's absolutely crazy, that there's nothing there. Um, you know, and there's, they're showing him footage saying that there's nothing there. And, uh, but he knows. He knows that he saw something. But they're all convinced that it was a, like a hallucination that him and his daughter were both sharing. It was almost like the Entity movie, where it was like, you know, they're seeing the thing, but no one believed it, and everyone thought they were just nuts. And the kid is basically seeing this thing as well. The mother is seeing the thing. They're going to church, talking to the priest, trying to, you know, almost like they're going to have like an exorcism, whatever they're going to do to get rid of this thing. You know, I thought this was a pretty creepy movie. There were some cool aspects with this thing that was, you know, creeping around and stuff like that. I thought the ending to this was pretty good, but I thought this was a very creepy movie about a creature thing living in the closet. You know, there's been a lot of kind of things like this, but there hasn't been one of these in a long time, this kind of movie. But I definitely recommend this. I thought it was very well done, and there's stuff, too, with the creature's plan is to take the face of the child, and because the creature doesn't have a face. And there's stuff in there, too, with the daughter finding this letter in the tree, and when she reads it, that's sort of what brings the creature to the closet. You know, I thought this one definitely is worth checking out, though. The next one I got is from Magnolia Entertainment, and it's a documentary which I was really looking forward to seeing called Juro Dreams of, Su of Sushi. And it's made by an American film company, but it's in Japanese, and it's about this old Japanese sushi restaurant. It's the one that I think it has like has this three star certain type of rating that no other place has gotten, and um, Basically, though, it's about this old man who's worked there, I think, for, 
I think his entire life, since he was eight years old, he's worked in the sushi business. And the place is in a subway, a Japanese subway downstairs. And you basically have to make a reservation for this place month in, months in advance. So it's basically a very fancy place. And it's basically talking about his life and how he was, I think, 13 years old or 10 years old, put on the street and basically made his own life. And talking about him you know, with his sons. And his son has just opened up a sushi restaurant and they don't know if you know he can keep it going the way his father has but this place is extremely popular and there's some amazing sequences of him putting together these sushi and really really good photography on it and it's basically focuses way more too on the life of this guy who's you know because you know you go to some restaurants stuff like that you can tell people don't really care what they're doing and they're just sort of just doing it for a job this person this character you know it, it, and this is his life this is all he does this is all he wants to do he wants to have everything be perfect and it really is amazing watching this person who's given his life to this and it's all he does and he's in there every single day of the week and you know everything has to be perfect and nothing can be wrong he has to taste everything and it's a very well done documentary I think it's one of the better documentaries I've seen in a really long time like I said too a lot of the stuff is all about the family showing how they're getting the you know the ingredients and all the stuff I don't know I've never seen anything like this I thought this was a really good one the next one I got now this is extremely difficult to explain I was watching I'm like how am I gonna ever explain this it was really really good though and it's called detention from Sony and it's kind of a mix of like jawbreaker mixed with mean girls mixed with student bodies mixed with scream mixed with like a real current teen comedy mix it's like so many aspects of so many different things you know and mixed with old school slasher films but basically it starts off it's this new movie called Cinderella 2 which is almost kind of like a Saw film from what I can tell like a film they're making a whole lot of them and there's always one that is getting made and two's coming out three's already in development but basically in this movie it stars Josh Hutchinson you know from the Hunger Games and Bridge to Tabithia and things like that but it's basically about this killer that's dressed like the character from the Cinderella films, which is really popular, killing off all the kids at the school. And they're all trying to figure out, you know, just to stop this thing. The one girl is getting attacked by the thing. No one really believes it. She's been like, tried to, they, the thing tried to hang her, and all these things. She just pe basically keeps being followed, kind of like Scream. This movie also has to do with, you know, which is kind of funny, with Time Machine, you know, going back in time. And I'm not going to say what the Time Machine is, and they have to try and fix things to save the school. There's some scenes in this that are kind of like the Breakfast Club, when all the kids are put into detention. Like I said, it's like such a strange movie to explain, because it's like, I've never seen a movie where it has so many different types of subplots and goes from genre to genre to genre. I've never seen something like this. I think it's one of the most original, different horror films in years. It, it, it really absolutely is. It's so difficult to explain. And I've said that a lot before about stuff, but this is the top. The top enchilada of trying to explain it. You can't. But there's a lot of cool people in it, too. The one guy who was in um, the Chillerama who was one character in Chiller Armour was in this. There's a lot of just kind of character actors and stuff that you see in a lot of independent films and stuff. I recognize a lot of people. But I really did think this was a really fun movie. Like I said, the time machine stuff's cool. I thought Josh Hutchinson was good in this. Um, all in all, though, I would really recommend this. Dane Cook plays the principal in the school. I thought he was good. You haven't seen him in much lately. But all in all, though, I'd really recommend this. This is a really good comedy horror film. Extremely different than anything you've seen before. Extremely hard to explain, but really good. The next one I got is another film title from Sony, and this one was really good. It's Samuel Jackson and Luke Wilson, who another person you don't see much at all anymore. Like, I really miss Luke Wilson. You know, it's more about Owen Wilson now. Like, Luke Wilson was, like, at first the one who was really popular. Then Owen Wilson kind of came in and became the one that everyone talks about. I always liked Luke Wilson, though. I liked that one movie he did called Kill the Man, which I don't know if that ever came out to DVD or not, but it was a Hollywood video exclusive years ago with him in a copy machine place. You know, I really loved that one. And it was kind of like, a little bit like Office Space, a little too much like Office Space, but I liked it, though. But, um... Meeting Evil, though, is about Luke Wilson. He works, for, you know, he's a realtor, and he's coming home, and he's sort of like a wreck, and, you know, he just lost his job, and, um, you know, and he, his wife's in there kind of pissed at him because there's a foreclosure notice on the on the house. They're basically broke. They're, you know, they were doing really well, had a huge house. Things were going great. She's just sort of sick of him. She takes the kids out to go to the park, 
and he's in there and notices Samuel Jackson comes to the door and says, would you mind helping me with something? And, um, you know, he has to help him with his car, push his car and get it to start. And the, something in the pipe of the thing, the exhaust pipe, explodes onto Luke Wilson's leg. And he says, oh, I'll take you to the hospital. And basically it was a really bad decision to go with, to go with Samuel Jackson's character. And, you know, and I'm not going to say all of what happens, but Samuel Jackson's character ends up saying, oh, you know, I'll take you to the bar. He doesn't take him where he's supposed to go. He takes him first, though, to the gas station. You see something's up in the gas station. You don't know what's going on, why Samuel Jackson's in there. And he takes him, you know, to the, the bar. And basically, Samuel Jackson's character doesn't disappear. He keeps on following with him. And I will say that Samuel Jackson is doing some really terrible things and getting in the car with them was the absolute worst decision that he could have done. The The ending to this is absolutely amazing. I love what they did with this. I think this is great. It's a really good thriller. You know, there's a, some really cr insane sequences in this. This one is extremely recommended. I don't want to ruin what Samuel Jackson's up to. I just don't, I don't want to say it, but it's really, really good. And Samuel Jackson was great. I, it's too bad that this didn't get a good release, because I don't think it came to theaters. It's really good. The next one I got is um, a one from called Surviving High School. It's basically four movies about high school and all kinds of problems. Like the one girl's this really bad girl. It's called, you know, getting into trouble at school. One has Raven Simone, and she's, um, you know, trying to ha go to the prom. And it's, you know, during the time when it's like segregation and things like that. This is a really good one. Kind of reminds you, though, it's like four different movies, like I said. You know, sometimes I don't like to think back too much on high school. Like, high school wasn't the worst for me. Middle school was like a nightmare. But this is a cool one if you want to have four different movies all about high school things and all the high school problems and things like that. Now the next one, this is one I really want to show. This is what I got from Comic Con. And this is going to come, I bought this at Comic Con and it's, I think it's coming out at the end of August, this exact set. There's also going to be a set of this from Time Life that has all this of the Power Rangers series, which is like the later ones. I never watched the later ones. And also these are coming out separately. But it's the Power Rangers, the complete series. So this is the first three seasons when it was the Power Rangers. Then it became something else. And how it's in here is it's um, season one's in two volumes. Volume one and two. And then... Season 2 is in two volumes as well. So you can buy these separately when they come out. You know, Season 2, Volume 2. Season 2, Volume 1. And then Season 3 is on its own disc. And it comes with one, I don't really remember this, called Power Rangers, uh, Mighty Morphin, Alien Rangers. And this whole set's from Shout Factory. And the other one that it comes with is a bonus disc. Um, you know, with the cast and things like that. This is a really cool set, though. Like, these are the ones that I wanted to get the most, because I never watched the later seasons of this show. And this is the Comic-Con exclusive with the exclusive backing on it. But like I said, I never really watched it. Like, I remember with this show, though, when it first came out, I remember, have, like, people were having Power Rangers parties. I think I had a Power Rangers party. Like, you know, the toys were insane. Like, I remember, you know, yeah, I had to, like, tr like, go through boxes as a little kid trying to find, like, the Green Ranger and like the Power Rangers was kind of like the Power Rangers then after that the biggest trend became Tamagotchis which were the other biggest things since Power Rangers but this is a really fun show you know I grew up watching this I'm glad to have a set of this like I said there's also the Time Life set you can get with all the later seasons as well which I never really watched I'm sure they were fine but like kind of like I just, these are just to me childhood I just really loved them at the time and they're just fun to have them the next ones I just want to show are the things that I'm in that are out and of course Girls Gone Dead, and like I want to say thank you for everyone who's picked up copies of this so far. It's been doing really well on Amazon. I really think this is a fun movie. I think you guys are going to really like this. So if you haven't seen Girls Gone Dead, definitely check this one out. I'll put the link for the Amazon for this. Also coming out on the July 31st is The Haunting of Whaley House. And I, you know, I, I showed some pictures and things like that for the Comic Con signing for this. This is a really good, um, you know, I'm in the opening to this film. It's a really good haunted house film about a group of these kids that go to a house trying to see if they can see any ghosts at night, and things don't go well. And I will say too, like this was, I thought this was a really well put together film. I really liked this. It actually had some really creepy stuff in it too. I would definitely check this one out when it comes out on the 31st. And the other one I wanted to show 
is The Theater of Derange, and this is a another horror anthology film, and the short film that I did years back um, is Lust for Blood is on this, the one about me going to a fair, talking to a fortune teller, to getting turned into a creature and melting and things like that, and you know, attacking everybody. I, I always loved that short that I did, but definitely check this one out if you get a chance. It's called Theater of Deranged. Anyway, though, thanks a lot for watching and for subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.